Hello and welcome everyone to Theorycraft, the series where we take concepts and make theoretical techniques to accomplish the goals we set for ourselves. In this episode, we're going to be looking at using Enderman to transport blocks. This video shall be in three parts. Part 1 will be on block disposition. Part 2 will be on block transportation. And part 3 will be on block deposition. To start off this video, we're going to look at part 1, block disposition. Here we have an Enderman. Every game tick, the Enderman will have a 5% chance of trying to pick up a block. This means that the Enderman will try to pick up a block on average every 2.5 seconds. When an Enderman tries to pick up a block, he takes his coordinates, the coordinates of his feet, x, y, and z. The game then puts these coordinates through a mathematical transformation, such that r1, r2, and r3 are random numbers between 0 and 1. This ultimately maps to a 5x3x5 five three five region centered on the Enderman's position. If the block picked by the Enderman is a pickable block, then the Enderman will pick it up. Pickable blocks include grass, dirt, mycelium, sand, red sand, gravel, clay, podsol, flowers and mushrooms, cactus, pumpkin, melon, and TNT. We, however, can exploit the formula and expand the effective region to a 5x4x5 five by by five area by raising the Enderman up using a half slap. Thus, we can increase the chance that Enderman will pick up a block from the, a general region, or decrease the chance an Enderman will pick up a specific block. Now we're going to move on to block transportation using Enderman teleportation. Once again, we have an Enderman. After a random number of game ticks, the Enderman will try to teleport. When an Enderman tries to teleport, the game obtains his coordinates, x, y, and z, and puts these coordinates through the following transformation. If the picked block is air, then the game checks the block underneath that point. If the block underneath the air is not water or air, and there is enough room for the Enderman to teleport, then the Enderman will do so. However, if the block underneath the chosen block is air, the Enderman will try to teleport to that air block, and the process repeats. This means the Enderman can teleport 32 blocks in any direction. It also means the Enderman can teleport an unlimited amount of blocks downwards. This random teleportation can also be forced by attacking the Enderman with snowballs by a snow golem, for example. Now we're going to move on to the third part of this video, block deposition. Once again, we have an Enderman. Every game tick, the Enderman will have a 0.05% chance of trying to place his block. This means that the Enderman will try to place the block on average every 100 seconds. When an Enderman tries to place a block, he takes his coordinates, x, y, and z. The game then puts the point through the following transformation, where r1, r2, and r3 are random numbers between 0 and 1. This ultimately maps to a 3x2x3 three by by three region centered on the Enderman's position. When the Enderman tries to place a block, in block star in this case, it shows the block beneath block star. If the block beneath block star is a 1x1x1 one by one by one block, i.e. not a partial or air block, the Enderman will place the block in block star. We again can exploit the formula and expand the effective region to a 3x3x3 three by three by three area by raising the Enderman up using a half slab. This will increase the area in which an Enderman can deposit the block. We can do this such that roughly 50% of all blocks are valid placing points. The redstone behind the system would be simple. I'm going to divide this into three sections once again. Picking up the blocks, Enderman transport mechanism, and also, finally, the placing of the blocks. When the Enderman picks up the block we wish to be transported, we can use a bud switch to detect the Enderman picking up the block and then push him into the next system. Because there is a 5% chance every game tick for the Enderman to pick up a block, we can decrease the time taken for the Enderman to pick up the block by adding more Enderman. However, since we cannot detect which Enderman has the block, this will only speed up the starter of the process. 
Next, we're going to look at the Enderman transportation system. So first, we're going to have a look at transporting one Enderman across the distance. So here is the mechanism for transporting one Enderman. The grey region is a region where the Enderman cannot teleport to. It could be simply open space or a region of two high rooms. Either way, the Enderman mustn't be able to teleport there. These regions are also 32 blocks across. All line blocks are slabs and are connected to sticky pistons. At the start they are all retracted and thus there is an air block three blocks above the red block. When the line block extends, the air block is replaced with a slab. So just to reiterate, initially all line blocks are retracted. So the basic algorithm goes a bit like this. Firstly, an enderman is on the red block A. Then the enderman is shot at by snow golems, forcing it to teleport to red block B. As soon as an enderman teleports to red block B, line block A extends blocking the teleportation path to A. Then the Enderman is shot once again by another snow golem. The Enderman teleports to red block C. Then this causes the line block B to extend, blocking the teleportation path to B. We repeat this until the Enderman has reached its final destination. Now we're going to look at the case of multiple Endermen. All lime and yellow blocks are slabs, that are connected to sticky pistons, similarly to the last setup. Initially, all yellow blocks are retracted and all lime blocks are extended. Initially, the enderman is on line block A. Line block A retracts and we start the teleportation progress. So the enderman is on red block A. Now, the Enderman is then shot at by snow golems, forcing it to teleport to Lime Block B. When Red Block A deactivates, Lime and Yellow Blocks A extend, and the teleportation path to A is blocked. Then, Lime Block B retracts. Then, the Endermen are on Red Block B. Then, the Endermen are shot at by snow golems once again. The Enderman teleport to Lime Block C. When Red Block B deactivates, Lime and Yellow Blocks B extends, blocking the teleportation path to B, and Lime Block C retracts. This is then repeated until the Enderman reaches its final destination. To get the Enderman back from the final position to the initial position, we can just do the whole system in reverse. So, what are the pros and cons of multiple Endermen? versus using one single Enderman. In the case of multiple Endermen, the Endermen take much less time to pick up the block. However, they also take a much longer time to teleport the distance. Depending on distance, this may or may not be worth it. For smaller distances, it is faster to use pistons anyway, thus transporting blocks via Ender block travel over small distance isn't necessary. For large distances, many Endermen are not worthwhile, as the time taken to travel the distance is much, much larger than the time taken to pick up the block. Therefore, Ender block travel will be the fastest way of transporting blocks over large distances where it is required with only one Enderman. Now we're going to move on to the Enderman block placement at the end. When the Enderman reaches the end, we want it to place his block. We can create a special pattern which will maximize the number of valid spaces for the Enderman to place his block. We can detect the block's arrival once again with the budded sticky pistons, which instantly retract as soon as the Enderman places the block. So, that's it! We've created a theoretical system to transport blocks over a massive distance at an incredibly fast rate compared to piston mechanism. Finally, credit must go where credit is due, and Wubby Concepts and Cava PC really helped out with the looking into the code for this video, so give a big thanks to Wubby and Cabo for their amazing work. Thanks a bunch, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of TheoryCraft! Please support me with a like if you enjoyed this video, and leave your comments down below.